Prime Minister of St. Martin, the Honorable Silveria Jacobs, ESF 5 Coordinator and Chief of Police, Chief Carl John. Members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I'm Rolika Roach of the Department of Communication, and on behalf of the Prime Minister of St. Martin, I welcome you to this broadcast as it relates to the developing state of affairs surrounding COVID-19. For more on this subject, I invite the Prime Minister of St. Martin, the Honorable Silveria Jacobs, to address you. Thank you very much, Ms. Roach. Good afternoon to one and all. Good evening, I must say, as well as to Mr. Carl John, Chief of Police of St. Martin. It gives me no pleasure, however, it is necessary for me to finalize statements that I started yesterday in um, Friday's statements here to the press made with my ESF coordinators, updating on the state of affairs as it relates to COVID-19 and St. Martin's response. As we all know, our numbers has been steadily growing, and in an effort to mitigate this, the EOC has decided to institute a state of emergency. As of today, this national decree was signed by His Excellency Governor E.B. Holiday and myself, and this authorizes a full shutdown for two weeks. There will be a 24-hour curfew in place. No one will be allowed to be on the road as of 0 hundred hours on Sunday, April 5th, 2020, with the exception of emergency services, essential services related to COVID-19, and essential government services. And all those persons would have either been issued a disaster pass or received written permission from me, Prime Minister Jacobs, or Chief of Police, Carl John. The exemptions to those who are allowed to be on the road are as follows. In Article 2 of the decree, it states that, of course, the governor and other elected and appointed officials, as well as their security and chauffeurs, that includes the members of parliament, are exempt from these restrictions. Also persons who are working in any organization that is mentioned in the Addendum 1. Persons mentioned in the Addendum 1 are persons who are employed at businesses such as medical emergency and paramedic services, pharmacies, which are based on the regular opening hours on Sundays and holidays, hotels, guest houses, yachting agents, and marinas, which still have guests requiring service, security companies, which must provide security services to businesses, media outlets, garbage collection services, essential government services for emergency services only, remote technical support for telecommunication and utilities, freight services, um, which include, of course, any deliveries that need to be made, especially in the interest of the COVID situation, including the airport and the harbor, shipping and cargo companies, including FedEx and DHL, which may make emergency deliveries for medical pharmaceutical products and other government essential services. Also, I must reiterate that though some may find it harsh, we must do a total shutdown in order to mitigate the spread. Many, many persons, though we have been admonishing them differently over the past three weeks, and especially over the past two weeks, since we have uh, shut down the outer traffic to St. Martin via our airport and harbor, we have asked the people of St. Martin to remain only moving on essential services. Of course, not everyone has been adhering, and we have seen that the community spread of the virus has started. So in order for us to flatten that curve, it is necessary for us to become disciplined, for us to be conscientious of our fellow man and not engage in behavior that would bring the entire community into danger. As such, all construction projects will cease except for the COVID-related construction that is happening at St. Martin Medical Center. Grocery stores, bakeries, hardware stores, electronic notaries, medical and laboratory services, sorry, and medical practitioners, dental clinics, and veterinary, veterinary clinics will all only be able to operate in case of emergencies. 
Special emergency services can have arrangements for the delivery of food via restaurants, for commercial laundry services, for maintenance and repair of the emergency vehicles. Two gas stations will be open to service the emergency service um, providers, such as police, fire department, ambulance, doctors, essential government workers, and essential businesses that are open to provide assistance to essential business owners. And these will all have an agreement in advance with this business or these businesses. Suppliers of cooking glass are also allowed to provide delivery service only for emergency services. And that could be also for private use, but an emergency number would then be provided. All above mentioned businesses must be in possession of a valid disaster pass. In absence of a disaster pass, the manager or entity may request a waiver from the chief of police, Carl John, by means of a letter, and this would be needing to be stamped and signed by KPSM. As I mentioned before, the decree gives the police additional authority, and persons are, during this curfew, not allowed to gather on the roadsides or conduct lead or organize parades on public roads or to hold publicly accessible gatherings for leisure and entertainment. This also includes for religious purposes. As you may recall, I have in the past indicated that the spread of COVID also spreads during church services. And while some restrictions were put in place, many entities continued to execute regular church services with no social distancing. As such, in the decree, it also highlights that anyone allowed to be on public places must maintain a social distance of one and a half to two meters from other persons. The police and others assigned by them are authorized to enforce the state of emergency decree to the highest regard, and they will make use of this. Police Carl John can further explain. However, they are also allowed to seize property if that is deemed necessary. Persons will be detained and fined should they be caught breaking this curfew. One of the reasons why this is necessary is because of our numbers, our staggering numbers. I would like to announce the update that was received uh, by CPS. Self-quarantine, 274 persons who continue to be monitored. Self-isolation, 132. The number of persons tested, 82. The number positive, 25. And the number males, 18, seven females. The number negative, 41. The number pending still, 16. Four deaths have already been recorded, and my sympathy and condolences goes out to all those who have been affected by this virus, whether they are suffering or have family members, loved ones that have passed on, and we continue to work together to continue to fight the growth of the numbers and keeping St. Martiners safe. So far, only one person has recovered, and we will be updated as soon as we get uh, updated numbers. As I mentioned earlier, the waivers for the entities that carry out service that is essential and emergency services will be had via um, our police department. Thank you, Prime Minister Silveria Jacobs. At this time, I invite ESF 5 Coordinator and Chief of Police, Chief Carl John, to address you. Thank you, Rolaika. As I mentioned yesterday, um, enforcement will be strict. The police force has been um, reinforced with the military. We have all stakeholders on board. We are working very closely with our French counterparts. Um, it will not, non-compliance will not be accepted. We will be very strict on the 24-hour curfew, and I'm really asking everyone again, please try to, com to comply with the curfew. Please stay at home. Thank you so much, Chief John. As we are practicing social distancing, the members of the media have made their questions available via a WhatsApp group chat. We'll be right back 
with the question and answer session. Please stay tuned. Coronavirus is most likely to spread from person to person when we come into close contact with one another. We can all help stop the spread by keeping our distance. This means do not shake hands or exchange physical greetings and wherever possible, stay at least 1.5 to 2 meters away from others. It's also really important to practice good hygiene, especially after being in public places. Together we can help stop the spread and stay healthy. Visit martingovorg forward slash coronavirus or call 914 to learn more. This public service announcement is is brought to you by the government of St. Martin. There's an outbreak of respiratory illness worldwide caused by the coronavirus COVID-19. Here are a few health tips to keep in mind to protect yourself and your family. Monitor your health for 14 days after traveling. If you develop a fever, cough, or have difficulty breathing, stay at home and notify your house doctor. Practice cough etiquette, hand hygiene, and avoid close contact with people who are coughing or sneezing. If you require urgent medical care, be sure to call ahead before going to see your doctor or to the emergency room. Tell your healthcare provider of your symptoms, travel history, or if you think you were exposed to a person with COVID-19. For additional information, call 914. This public service announcement is brought to you by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the government of St. Martin. Hi, my name is Ayana Doran and I attend the St. Martin Academy High School. This month, we learn about single-use plastic and how it negatively affects the environment. Did you know that human beings consume about 250 grams of plastic per year? To learn more about single-use plastic and how you can do your part, let's all help reduce, reuse, and recycle. So St. Martin can be plastic-free by 2023. Hay un brote de enfermedad respiratoria en todo el mundo causada por el coronavirus COVID-19. Tenemos algunos consejos de salud que debe tener en cuenta para protegerse y proteger a su familia. Controle su salud durante 14 días después de viajar. Si desarrolla fiebre, tos o tiene dificultad para respirar, quédese en casa y notifique a su médico. Después de toser, proceda a la higiene de las manos y evite el contacto cercano con personas que tosan o estornuden. Si necesita atención médica urgente, asegúrese de llamar con anticipación para informar su estado de salud antes de visitar a su médico o a la sala de emergencias. Notifique de sus síntomas, historial de viaje o si cree que estuvo expuesto a una persona con COVID-19. Para información adicional, llame al 914. Este anuncio es dirigido a usted a través del Centro de Servicios Públicos por el Control y Prevención de Enfermedades y el Gobierno de San Martín. You ever hear earthquake call and say, Hello, Mr. Mara, it's me. Earthquake are coming in Tuesday around 10. No, sir. Earthquake does arrive unannounced and when it comes, it'll shake all the sense and the sensibility out of we. Remain calm, stay inside and do the DCH. Drop, cover, hold on. Want to shake and start and you know it's an earthquake? Make a quick move for a safe place. Don't run to the doorway or any exit and the stairs that may be broke up or even full of people. Elevator, avoid that because you might get in and then poof, how are gone? And you're stuck in a box with Air. Take cover under a strong table or a bed, or crouch against an inside wall or inner corner and cover your face and your head with your arms. Remember, DCH. Drop, cover, hold on. Glass windows and doors, outside walls in an earthquake, that is bad news. Take care yourself. Most injuries during earthquakes happen when something drops and hit people entering or exiting a building. Last thing, don't bother run outside and ask, you feel it? You feel it? Remain calm, stay indoors until all the shaking stop and do the DCH. Drop, cover, hold on. This public service this announcement was brought to you by Sedima and the government of St. Martin. Une épidémie mondiale a été déclarée cause par le coronavirus COVID-19. Voici quelques conseils de santé à garder à l'esprit pour vous protéger, vous et votre famille. Surveillez votre santé pendant 14 jours après avoir voyagé. En cas d'apparition de symptômes de la maladie, toux et fièvre ou sensation de fièvre, il ne faut surtout pas se rendre directement chez le médecin ou aux urgences, mais d'appeler à l'avance. Maintenir une distance d'au moins une mètre avec les personnes qui toussent ou qui éternuent. Si vous avez besoin d'une assistance immédiate, il convient de faire appel à votre médecin traitant ou aux urgences. En cas d'infection, informez votre médecin de vos symptômes, de vos voyages récents ou si vous avez été exposé à une personne atteinte de COVID-19. 
Pour davantage des informations sur le coronavirus COVID-19, un numéro a été mis en place en 914. Cette annonce de service public vous a été présentée par les centres d'épidémie et de la prévention et le gouvernement de Saint-Martin. Welcome back to the live press conference. Thank you for joining us. We now move over, over to the question and answer session. The first question is from Bibi Shaw of SMN News. To the Prime Minister, Prime Minister, employers that are forcing their employees to work all day in the crisis, are there any controls being done by the inspectors? Thank you, Alaika. Thank you, Bibi. Um, the question is warranted, as I know our labor affairs department has been quite busy ensuring that the general public knows how to register label, labor disputes. Uh, the website, or sorry, the email address is dismissalteam at stmartingov.org, and uh, I believe we're also working on a call number. This hasn't been finalized yet, but the team at um, Labor Affairs, though they are working remotely, are replying to emails as well as calling persons who complain. So I would encourage those persons who are going through any type of labor dispute to get in contact with dismissal team at stmartingov.org. Thank you, Prime Minister. The second question also from Bibi Shaw. During the lockdown, will supermarkets be open at any time? We have instituted a lockdown uh, to start as of 5th of April, that is at midnight tonight. Um, as you all know, on Sundays, since two weeks ago, Sundays has been closed anyway, so it was, doesn't really affect tomorrow because it will be as if it will be Sunday for two weeks, basically. Um, we have asked over the past weeks, Ms. Roach um, and Ms. Shaw, who provided that question, we've been asking the general public to prepare themselves just like you would prepare for a hurricane, except that you have no problems with electricity, water, or food running out. But you should have within your home at least a two-week supply of food, water, medication, etc., that you need for yourself and your family, and to make arrangements for such. Why? Not only because a shutdown was imminent, but because at times, you are told from one day to the next that you need to go into quarantine or that you need to be isolated for two weeks. So if you don't have someone that can bring that stuff to you, then you should be prepared. And we've been talking about this for over a month now. Um, today, um, what is going to be a reality is that we have decided to, the most of the movement has been to the supermarket. And we've given persons ample time. Yesterday, when the question or when it came out, I heard a voice note going around. The EOC had taken a decision, yes, but we had not publicized it because um, such a decision requires a national decree, which requires the governor to be in compliance as well and understanding as well as in agreement. We as government can take a decision, but once our law requires you to have the governor sign off on a decree, of course, it must be something that he can live with. So it took us over 24 hours to actually get the national decree to meet both our um, requirements and with the main concern being food security for our people. I was able to assure the governor as well as within the EOC, we have started with ESF7 to provide food baskets for the vulnerable. We may not have food baskets for everyone in this weekend, and I know distribution has started today, um, but through social services as well and community development, through the many community councils, we are busy getting the information on those who have needs. Similarly, there is a um, email address, I don't have that one right at hand, but government websites and Facebook pages, you can send the information if you have lost your job recently, if you expect that you will not be paid at the end of April or have not been paid at the end of March. Um, my concern is extremely high for those persons who are not able to make those purchases for two weeks, and so I implore you to get in contact with us via the email addresses provided or via the website on the, uh, the click on the necessary 
bullet on the web page and on the website so that we can know and meet your need. The reasons why supermarkets will be open for emergencies is to be able to allow for deliveries to be made via government. And if someone needs something essentially, that we would be able to facilitate that they would be able to get the necessary food stuff. And pharmacies also are going to be open like they are on Sundays. So different times, different hours for different pharmacies. We are concerned about this and we will do everything to ensure that no one goes hungry during this period. After the first week, we will reassess to ascertain whether it is totally necessary and then slowly allow smaller groups to go to the shop at different times, especially within their own neighborhoods. So if we behave well, we can slacken the, um, I have the authority within the national decree to change and allow certain um, necessary um, services to be open. And of course, um, food accessibility is one of them. Prime Minister, curtailing into what you just mentioned, you did mention that we do have persons delivering food and dealing with those in isolation and confinement. Another question from B.B. Shaw, those persons that have family members taking care of them, those are in isolation or confinement, have they been provided PPE wear? PPEs have been in short supply and of course we've been reserving those for the actual nurses who are going out to deal with these persons, for the doctors that have to deal with them and other medical personnel. We have requested more to be brought in, but of course we are still awaiting those. And as soon as they are distributed, I know what the CPS nurses do is they give them masks so that they are at least protected um, from any coughing or sneezing, etc., that the sick person would exhibit. Persons who are dealing with COVID patients get a very strict protocol from CPS, which I do not have at hand, but in our next um, press briefing or press conference, I will ensure that Ms. Lista de Weaver um, presents what is the information given to those taking care of COVID positive patients. Prime Minister, final question from B.B. Shaw. As it relates to border control, are persons with elderly relatives on either side allowed to take food to those persons, and if so, what will be the requirements to do so? So as I mentioned before, anyone needing a special arrangement will be able to, as of tomorrow, the police chief tomorrow, together with the prefect and uh, Chief uh, Commander Basso, we will be doing another press conference because everything that relates to both sides of the island needs to be properly explained. Um, so what we know for sure is that the police uh, will be uh, giving special permissions, and these are what we call the emergency cases. So you will get a number tomorrow, a WhatsApp number, whereby you can request special permissions, and once that is granted, then the force on the ground will be alerted that you are allowed to be on the road as well. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you, Bibi Shah of SMN News. We now move on to Dimitri Wheatfield of the Daily Herald. For the Prime Minister, can you clarify if the shutdown is starting on midnight Sunday going into Monday or tomorrow Sunday into tonight into Sunday. My apologies. Okay, so the decree goes into effect um, after it has been signed and published the next day. So it was signed today. It goes into effect as of midnight tonight. However, as I mentioned earlier, Sundays were already a shutdown day, so it doesn't necessarily change what happens on a Sunday. Um, so actually, for persons who would have been used to moving on a Monday, it would then be practically um, on the ground, operationally, going into effect on Monday um, as of midnight as well. So those that would normally get up to go to work, as long as you're not working at the hospital and all of the other emergency services that I mentioned, you are not allowed to be on the road. Thank you, Prime Minister. Another question from Dimitri Wheatfield, seeking clarity on what is meant by grocery stores and other businesses can open only for emergencies. I think I partially answered that when I answered Bibi's question, but to clarify further, um, I had the list, it's in the decree. The decree will be also published on government's Facebook page with the attachment and groceries, bakeries for instance, that provide um, baked goods to the hospital, to the prison, etc. they will continue to provide that service and that delivery will be done. Um, 
hardware stores that are providing uh, essential services to those that are building the pavilions um, will continue to provide that. If government services require, for instance, that their technology has gone down so that we're able to provide these broadcasts, etc., that will be done. So it's based on arrangement that will be made between the entity that gives the service as well as the provider, and um, they will then get the necessary permissions from either Chief John or myself. Thank you, Prime Minister. Final question from Dimitri. Um, Prime Minister, can you clarify the nature of military assistance to St. Martin? Has additional troops come to St. Martin, and will they have the arrest powers? Should I pass that question to you? Chief John? Uh, thank you, Rolaika. Um, based on the, the, the question, um, the military officers that are stationed in St. Martin uh, will be the ones assisting the, the police force, and they will have all um, arrest powers uh, to make arrests. Yeah. Thank you, Chief John. Thank you, Dimitri Whitfield of the Daily Herald. We now move on to Andrew Dick of TV Carib. For Prime Minister, what are the ages of those infected and what is the update on the quarantine facility? Infected? Infected. Uh, I don't have the exact number or uh, age range of those uh, infected. Um, it's quite a large range. I think our youngest is 11 and I believe the eldest is 69. I'm not sure, I would like to clarify that with um, Ava Lista, but I do know that of the four that have passed away, they have ranged from 47 to 69 years of age. Was there more on that no. question? <laughs> the quarantine facility, the update on the quarantine yes, facility. Yes, the quarantine facility was open today. Um, it will remain anonymous as to what and where that is. And um, some of our, our isolated patients have been situated there to ensure that they can be uh, seen on a regular basis uh, without too much travel by our nurses and to ensure that they remain in isolation and therefore not be infecting others. The criteria was also not only on the fact that they were walking around, but it was also on what type of isolation they had in the home. So if they were not able to isolate properly in the home and thereby avoid infecting the rest of the family, those were the priority persons that were put into our quarantining or should I say isolation um, facility. Thank you. But I want to add that anyone caught of the quarantining and isolation group, um, we are, how you say, mandated with this decree now to actually put you in that facility whether you like it or not. Thank you, Prime Minister. Question from Andrew Dick of TV Carib for Chief Carl John. A number of domestic abuse cases were called into the police station and persons claimed that no assistance was offered. What is the response of the police? Uh, thank you, uh, Andrew, for the question. Um, naturally, I, I regret to, to hear this news, um, as uh, domestic violence is um, one of the focal points of our year planning. So we pay very much attention to this. Um, and with that, I want to also emphasize on um, even within the crisis, the police force will be um, providing all services that we normally provide. So um, I would like to encourage Andrew to get in contact with a police spokesman and hopefully he can share this information with us and we will um, still um, um, deal with those situations. Thank you, Chief John. We now have a question from Judy Fitzpatrick of the Daily Herald to the Prime Minister. Prime Minister, can you kindly indicate the ages of the four persons who have succumbed to COVID-19 thus far? Also, can you indicate the genders, locations of the last two deaths that occurred on Friday, and of any of the four deceased, did they have any pre-existing conditions, and have any of them, or did any of them recently travel, or were they in contact with anyone with the disease? Quite a mouthful there, Judy. Thank you for those questions. I did mention that the average age, um, we're not at liberty to divulge direct ages, but of the four persons that have passed away um, as a result of COVID-19, 
the youngest was 47 and the eldest was 69. The other two fell within that range. Um, they are not necessarily like what we would consider elderly, so that is a concern. Two males, two females, and they were both in the, or in the medical center. Um, the first was not in the medical center. The other three all passed in the medical center. Um, what I can say that um, contact tracing is still being done as these persons were not on CPS's list to say that we would have known in advance where they had been or where they hadn't been. And persons going into the hospital are already in a precarious position and not able to share information. So especially since they have passed, it would be very difficult to ascertain who they have been in contact with, and now we have to rely on the family members to be able to give that information. At current, it's, as you heard the numbers I mentioned, um, uh, Judy, there are several persons that we are running contact tracing for, and several persons have been added to the quarantine list as a, as a result of this. So persons who have been in contact with the deceased, direct contact with the deceased persons over the past two weeks have been automatically also placed on quarantine, um, on quarantine as well. And it is important to note that I know some people are, are very interested to know where these people lived, etc. But the only way to safeguard yourself, yes, it could be your neighbor, it could be someone you speak to, is to continue continue to exercise proper social distancing and a high level of hygiene, washing your hands often and definitely whenever you re-enter your home. But since you're now going to be safe at home, I'm hoping that everyone will live up to that, except for those, of course, that have to work and um, keep St. Martin safe. Thank you, Prime Minister. We now move on to Dr. Sock of Island 92. Prime Minister, where can we find the list of essential services as well as the national decree? The national decree has been published in the Gazette as soon as it was signed off. Um, the actual press conference was delayed until that could be finalized. I wanted it to be legitimized completely, and um, it was sent on to my legal affairs representative who published it in the Gazette. So it's currently in the Gazette, but as soon as this broadcast is over, it will also be uploaded to our government website. Thank you, Prime Minister. Another question from Andrew Dick of TV Carib, which I think, Prime Minister, you mentioned, um, but we will still go to the question. Food for those who have not had a chance to shop, will government provide aid to those vulnerable groups? And if yes, when? Thank you for that question. I'd, I'd be very surprised seeing the, the binge shopping that I saw going on over the past two days after my announcement, or I should say after the WhatsApp went out yesterday morning. Um, I had hoped that the people of St. Martin would have been better prepared and therefore would have not resorted to the types of behavior we're trying to avoid over the past two days, I was quite disappointed to see that the police had to intervene several times at several supermarkets to ensure that the persons standing outside were engaging in proper social distancing, even as the companies have put out their lines and put the places where people are allowed to stand. Again, the life you're saving is your own. When you go too close to another person, you do not know the history of that person. You do not know if that person has broken quarantine. You do not know. So um, again, that has ended now. Six o'clock stores closed. And those persons who are not capable, say they don't have the funds to be able to, to shop, need to contact social affairs as soon as possible and or community development via the website. Um, I will check to ensure that there is a number as well that can be called. Um, and we are doing already a service by providing um, food boxes that would last for a month to the vulnerable and assessing through the, the forms that have been submitted to social services. Those have, that have just come on during this week will be assessed and those are the government services that continue to work. We will assess prepare and deliver as soon as possible. Thank you, Prime Minister. S question from Stephen Cerulean of PJD2 Radio for the Prime Minister. A number of persons have yet to be paid or receive their salaries for services rendered last month. What would you say to employers who have not or are refusing to make salaries available to those employees? I would like to encourage the employers um, in your 
social corporate responsibility to pay the persons for the work executed, even under the lockdown in terms of stores being closed, etc. cetera. Um, I know many are not um, insured for the force majeure that has been brought upon us with this COVID-19. Um, it's not a hurricane that you could, um, could have um, prepared for, and many um, businesses around the world are suffering. But the government of St. Martin is still awaiting some assistance in terms of to be able to execute its stimulus plan. Our Minister of Finance is working on that, and it will be for individuals as well as businesses. So I would implore and really beseech all business owners to make as much provision as possible to pay their employees so that there are less persons with social challenges as we move forward. Government will assist, but of course we have to secure the funding for such as soon as possible and are working diligently towards that. So the persons who have not been paid, however, I would suggest that you either report to labor disputes or register with social services. Thank you, Prime Minister. We now move on to the next question from Dr. Sock of Island 92. Did the ICU beds arrive with equipment and personnel? Yes, um, actually it left the Netherlands today. Um, it is, we are expecting 12 ICU um, beds with all equipment. I saw Fleur Hermanides, um, who has a medical background, actually posted what is involved when you say ICU beds. And um, I will actually repost that as soon as I get a chance on government website so that the people of St. Martin understand what is being um, transshipped here to St. Martin. Um, and thanks to the Dutch government for that. Um, we are also getting a portable hospital, uh, which will hold, house six of those um, ICU units. And that will be set up um, at the tennis court area in front of the hospital. So there will be the pavilion on one side and the tent with the ICU on the other side, and the other six will be um, installed in the hospital itself. So that is going to be the complete unit, everything that comes with a ICU bed, all of the machinery, equipment, etc., and the personnel that is expected to help us will be arriving on the 7th and the 8th of April. So by then, the hospital will be set up, the hospitainer, like a tent hospital will be set up, and the persons are expected who will be assisting the medical personnel at the medical center on the 7th and 8th of April. Another question from Andrew Dick. Is there also a two-week lockdown for the front side? All discussions related to the front side will be in our press conference tomorrow. We had hoped to be able to have the joint press conference today after my announcement. However, uh, the decree did take much longer than expected to be finalized and uh, our, our counterparts had to move on to other meetings. So we have uh, promised to sit together tomorrow to inform the public on how it will work in terms of the French-Dutch cooperation in ensuring the mitigation of the spread as well as maintenance of public order. So I ask the general public as well as the media to look out tomorrow. We will be announcing um, what time that press conference will be tomorrow. Another question from Judy Fitzpatrick of the Daily Herald, Prime Minister. Can you kindly indicate what the total amount in terms of funds that the government has requested from the Netherlands? Unfortunately, I don't off the top of my head have that number. I have literally left the whole stimulus package and financial request up to our finance minister and economic affairs department, ESF 10, and the minister of TIAT. Um, they are working on that together. I will be able to answer that one in writing or at tomorrow's press briefing. But what I can tell you is that in yesterday's Kingdom Council of Ministers meeting that the liquidity support 2019, um, as soon as our budget has been finalized, that will be coming right away to St. Martin as the other requirements have already and conditions have been lived up to. And what I must also reiterate is thus far, all indications are that whatever funds will come our way will be in the form of a loan. Prime Minister, final question once again from Judy Fitzpatrick of the Daily Herald. What is the capacity of the quarantine facility? Are persons isolated and quarantined in separate rooms? And what is the staffing capacity at this facility? 
ISO. The current facility we've determined based on size to only use for isolation purposes. It has a maximum capacity of 60 and um, we are currently finalizing another location for the quarantines and as soon as that one is ready, we will make the announcements. We do not want to mix the quarantines as well as the isolation. So if someone has to leave quarantine to go to isolation, then they would move to the next facility. But of course, for most persons, Rulika, we would like that they are able to quarantine and isolate at home. If it is impossible to do so, please indicate to CPS so that we can facilitate that you can be served in the facility. Thank you, Prime Minister. In monitoring the live stream, we were granted with two more questions. And I think you were given the questions. I will allow the Prime Minister to read out those two questions. Thank you. For the persons that send questions that have been noted in the beginning of the live stream, one was about pregnant persons who have appointments at St. Martin Medical Center. I believe that um, this would be determined to be an emergency service. Um, so once you get in contact with your physician and it is determined that you should visit for your regular checkups, that that would be allowed. And you just need to make the provisions by calling the number um, that will be divulged tomorrow from the police department to be able to be granted that permission. The lockdown is planned for a two-week period. Of course, as I mentioned, we will assess after two weeks. So that was the next question, how long is the lockdown? Um, I must say many people for a long time have been asking me to lock down the country, and I have been reluctant for the very reason that the challenge is in terms of person who may not be able to afford to stock up food for two weeks. And so after one week, we will be assessing. And the first service that we are willing to release to allow um, a staggered approach to um, persons being able to shop, which would be either within their own um, districts or based on their last names. We haven't decided as yet based on this how this week would go, we will see which is the easiest to enforce because we do not want to have our police department running all over the island after it being shut down and see a repeat of what happened yesterday and today at our supermarkets. Persons are asked to only shop for what you need and not necessarily what you want. To when we do release the, the lockdown, you go to the supermarket, you pick up your items and you leave. It is not a time for socializing. We will have that opportunity once we can get control of COVID-19 on St. Martin. And I thank all of those who have been compliant thus far. There's one more question. Final question from Judy Fitzpatrick, once again from the Daily Herald. Prime Minister, many workers whose jobs are on the line or whom have already lost employment are wondering about how they will survive in the midst of this pandemic. Is there anything concrete in place to assist in this cat for this category of workers? Yes. Um, together with Labor Affairs we are and Social Affairs, we are asking all persons. There is actually a form to be filled out. I've noted that on Facebook they were saying that the site isn't secured and um, steps are being taken to secure it. So if you want to wait until Monday to start, um, I will be taking the necessary steps to secure the site so that the information is not going to be hackable. Um, and then you should register. Register as soon as possible. Uh, we will do all possible to protect your information. This information is used for us to know how many persons we need to help and in what um, timeline for the short, medium, and long term. We do expect that things will be difficult for a very, very long time, but the Minister of Finance, uh, his stimulus plan calls for a three-month support, and um, we're hoping that we'll get an answer on that by the 15th of April. Um, we are expecting, though, that by the 15th of April that there will be persons already in need, and the um, minister has a, how you say, a contingency plan that he's looking at other avenues through which to be able to assist what I can say, though, is that also the international agencies, UNDAC, have pledged to assist St. Martin, especially as it pertains to food security for the people. So food security is one of those issues that are part of the sustainable goals, and the United Nations want to promote that. And even though we are part of the kingdom, we are eligible for assistance in this regard. And so we are very thankful for that. 
Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you, Chief Carl John. This brings us to the end of the question and answer session. I would also like to thank the media for partaking given the unprecedented situation. Honorable Prime Minister, Chief Carl John, radio listeners and online viewers, this brings us to the end of this broadcast for today, Saturday, April 4th, 2020. For rebroadcast, tune in to St. Martin Cable TV, St. Martin Gov Radio 107.9, and the official Facebook page of the Government of St. Martin. For video on demand, log on to the official government's website at stmartingov.org. On behalf of the Department of Communication and the Government of St. Martin, I am Rolika Roach and wishing you a pleasant evening further.